First up, Tokyo, the largest city on the planet, is a riot of colors, sounds, and flavors. And our first visit is with U.S. Ambassador to Japan, Rahm Emanuel. I sat down with our former mayor over a lunch of cooked eggs, miso soup, and tempura vegetables to talk about the similarities between Chicago and Osaka. Very boisterous, very tell you like it is, not scared to be uh, straight to you which is a different kind of set of qualities. Like they also have a Michigan Avenue, kind of a magnificent mile down there. River runs through the central part of the city. So there's a lot of characteristics similar to the city of Big Shoulders. Osakans have an impressive appetite, having created udon noodle soup and street foods like takoyaki. For udon, we visit Usami Te Matsubaya, one of the birthplaces of Kitsune Udon, the wide, chewy noodles bathe in a deeply satisfying broth, topped with a slightly sweet sheet of fried tofu, scallions, and fish cake. Mushrooms lend earthiness to the broth, but at its core is dashi, the essential building block to most Japanese dishes, the backbone to soups, stocks, batters, even soy sauce. At the Osaka Dashi Museum, you can see how dashi is created. It starts with a type of seaweed called konbu, of which there are four types. A large piece is soaked in water overnight, then removed. The other ingredient in dashi is katsuobushi, a skipjack tuna, often called bonito, that's been smoked and dried in a long process that renders it as hard as wood. The katsuobushi has to be shaved, either in a machine or by hand. And then you submerge the wispy flakes in that same kombu water for just a few minutes. Once they're removed, you have dashi, which finds its way into those tiny balls of takoyaki. Batter is poured into half-moon molds, each sphere embedded with a tiny piece of octopus. Once fully cooked, they're topped with a semi-sweet sauce, Japanese mayo, smoked and dried tuna shavings, and powdered seaweed. This is what interests Paul Verant, the chef and owner of Gaijin in the West Loop, the name means foreigner, is here to learn from the pros and find inspiration. Gaijin is known for its okonomiyaki, or massive pancakes, but he's fascinated by the takoyaki at a local restaurant where they serve it with champagne. I mean, this is really inspiring. I think takoyaki would be something that would be really cool to serve at Gaijin. I've typically seen it with the okonomiyaki sauce, QP mayo, the aonori, and the bonito flakes, which I love, but it was really cool to try it with not everything all at once. Another style of dining created in Osaka is kapo, or counter seating. At Arinkaya, a traditional kapo, the cooks work within the seasons. A large steamed dumpling made from beets, fish paste, and scallops is served in a warm dashi-infused broth. A thicker broth surrounds pork belly and bok choy, while the chef plates an impressive display of one fish, utilizing its liver, cheeks, and bones to create three distinct components on the same plate. Verant shops a local market to find ingredients for a pair of okonomiyakis he'll make alongside an Osaka chef at Chibo. Typically made with cabbage and scallions, Verant brings his own ideas. So one of the okonomiyakis that I'm doing today is a signature item with fried shrimp, but it has influence from Louisiana. We make like a Creole butter with the corn. He then tops it with fried shrimp from the market. Local maitake mushrooms and kabocha squash are used to show off a vegetarian version. His host keeps things classic, topping with QP mayo and dried tuna shavings, while showing off his presentation skills. This cultural exchange of ideas is what the sister city relationship is all about. Like a Chicago pizza, or uh, Osaka uh, Japanese pancake, the crossover, the relationships makes the innovation. So think of Osaka as the second city to Tokyo. And don't assume that every trip to Japan has to just be Tokyo then Kyoto because Osaka is just another 15 or 20 minutes by bullet train past Kyoto. Also, the food here is just unmatched. They have a saying here, quidware, which roughly translates as eat until you drop. That pretty much says it all. Hope you enjoyed today's video, everybody. I'm Steve Delinsky. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.